Hello and welcome to Gardening at 58 North. So in this video I'd like to give you guys an update again of how the vegetables are doing in my garden as I'm trying to feed my family for a year. So this video update I'll give you a quick update of how all the plants are doing. I'll do a little bit of gardening as well. And the main thing about today's video is looking at some of the pests and, and disease problems that we're already starting to get here in the garden and some of the issues that we're getting and how we're going to try and overcome them this year. So I'll start off in the polytunnel. I've managed to get the doors open and get the humidity down enough so that I can film. Normally it gets so humid the lens keeps steaming up and it will probably happen at some point during this video. So I'll start on, over on the left here. I recently planted up all these tumbling tom tomatoes. These are looking quite good now. They're coming along, along nicely. A couple of them are a little bit smaller and stunted but once the roots get established these should take off. These won't be staying here in the polytunnel. They'll be going elsewhere once we've got a new greenhouse built for them but they're just here for now. They're small dwarf tomatoes so they don't take up too much space and they don't need pruning. So I'll look at the rest of the polytunnel now. We got it quite well grown up. It does need to get planted with some of the more tropical plants. Now normally we would, we would have this planted up with tomatoes mainly and a few peppers. But the problem is we've had a lot of tomato blight the last few years. So we're going to have no tomatoes in here this year. All the tomatoes are going in the greenhouse. So I'll need to find something to replace the tomatoes with. And we were going to do it with peppers. But this year we didn't really seem to get any germination on our pepper plants. So we've got very few peppers. So I'm just going to probably replace it with courgettes and maybe some more dwarf beans. But I'll give you an update of how everything's going. So this section up here is growing really well. You can see we've got loads of strawberries coming on. So I have actually harvested about 10 of them already. We've got loads more coming on. Unfortunately we only had the one variety. I don't know the name of the variety. But it all crops at the same time. So we do get a bit of a glut for about a month. Around about May, June time what we really need to do is get a second variety so we can have a longer extended season and less of a glut and you can see over here there's quite a few red ones coming on these actually ripen up really fast in this warm polytunnel so the ones that are kind of half yellow half red now by the end of the day they'll probably be bright red and ready for harvesting so they do do really well here we also grow the same variety outside which crops about a month or two later so that does stagger the crop a bit for us but it would be good if we could get a second variety in then going forward into these beds here, we've got the dwarf chilies, which are just starting to grow. They're still a little bit behind. We've got a second lot of sowing of cabbages. We had real bad germination with our cabbages this year. I think the seeds weren't very good. So I've planted up some new red cabbage and green cabbage. They'll be going out in the garden probably in, the, in a week or two once they're a bit bigger and a bit more established. Also have a few more seeds just coming on. Most of them are ornamentals, but there's a few other brassicas. I think these are broccoli down here, but they're struggling a little bit. On the right hand side, we have our lettuce patch. The lettuce has been cropping phenomenal for the last two months or so. And we're probably going to get another two or three weeks of harvesting. And then the whole thing is going to go to seed because it's getting to that stage of the life where it goes to seed. And also it's getting quite hot now as it's later in the year. So I need to be harvesting all this soon and then replacing it with some more tropical plants. The same goes for the rocket down here. The rocket, as you can already see, is going to seed. It's got these little yellow flowers. We'll keep cutting them off. We'll keep cropping it for another few weeks and then we'll probably have to replace this with tropical plants. And they all are already getting a bit too hot and spicy just because of the high temperatures that they're growing in. So that'll be replaced soon. So on the left in the central bed, I showed you in a previous video, I planted this up. I've made this structure here for the cucumber. So I've got four cucumber plants in the middle there, which is this one those two and the one on the side there. I had originally planted these two first. I don't normally plant all my cucumbers at once because one year we planted them at once and the ground was a bit cold and we had cutworm and they all were killed off. So I waited a week until I planted these two and you can see the growth difference. These have been in high temperatures, good light levels. They're nice stocky plants. These ones are the same age, but they've just been in lower light levels and a lower temperature and they're just not looking quite as healthy. So you can see the difference there with a the good growing environment if they're planted at the right time of year. We've also got a few dwarf beans which is just coming on. So these will give us a quick crop of beans. And we also have a butternut squash plant. We've got various ones of these dotted around the polytunnel. And the idea is they'll go underneath some of the taller plants, form like a ground cover, and then they'll give us a really good crop right at the end of the year. Because butternut squash stores so well, we can harvest loads of fruits in autumn. We'll be able to use them throughout the whole winter. So going forwards, we got the sweet corn here. It's a little bit stunted. I think it's just getting its roots established, but this should take off soon. I did put quite a bit of nitrogen in the soil, so this would really start to grow quickly once it gets its roots down. You can see some of them though are starting to take off, like this one here. This one's really starting to grow nicely. And some of the other ones, you can see the older leaves are a bit yellow, but the newer leaves are getting bigger and more brightly coloured. So 
within a few weeks these are going to be massive sweet corn always grows really really fast if you've got a good warm environment for them and you can also see these as well are planted underneath underneath them with dwarf beans just to get a double cropping i'm trying to do as much double cropping as i can this year just to maximize my yields and over here same again we've got lots of sweet peppers but they're undercropped with dwarf beans and there's also a few chilies mixed in it as well so you can see the dwarf beans are going to crop quite early and then the peppers will be later cropping and they'll also be taller as well and again we've got a butternut squash at the end there and then at the back here i've got another structure that i've made for a climbing plant this is for melons the first year we've tried melons so we'll see how they do normally i would think scotland's a bit cold for melons even in a greenhouse but hopefully this variety will work so these are four melon plants which are going to grow up here and again a butternut squash for growing underneath the sweet corn coming around we've got some pumpkins which i'll be planting outside soon once the bad winds have dropped something i'll talk about later in the video is the weather which hasn't been ideal in the last few days but these will be going out soon these are for uh, one of the patches outside it's the first time i've grown pumpkins in this garden outside so i'll see how they do the problem with scotland is the climate isn't ideal for pumpkins so you don't normally get such high yields and they do tend to ripe a little bit late in the year and then over here this is a mixture of lettuce radish and purple top turnips now the the radishes we've harvested most of them and the few that i've missed have actually gone to seed you can see they're all shooting up now so these will all go to seed soon so any radishes left in here are kind of useless they've gone to seed but we've got loads of purple top turnips starting to come on and quite a few lettuce so you can see the lettuce here they're starting to heart up already these aren't the cut and come again lettuce like the other bed these are the ones you individually harvest so i'll be harvesting these a bit after i finish with the cut and come again bed and then we've got several turnips as well there's loads of leaves at the moment they're only just starting to fatten up the actual edible part so it'll probably be another week or two until i get a good harvest out of this bed this one here is probably one of the biggest turnip plants What's happened is the nitrogen level is a little bit too high in this bed so we've got loads of leaf growth but what's hopefully happened now is all the nitrogen has been used up as it is normally the first nutrients to get used up by the plant and they'll hopefully put all their energy now into the stems and the edible parts so you can see this one loads of leaves there is a little bit of an edible um, turnip at the bottom there but I should expect in the next few weeks all the turnips will be putting all their energy into that and we'll be getting a good harvest soon now I should have thinned this more, more and we were going to have a crop underneath here of beetroot. It looks like the beetroot is getting a bit too smothered. You can see a few plants here just starting to, to grow along. But I think, to be honest, I've let it get too smothered. I should have thinned this out a bit more regularly. So we probably won't get a second crop of beetroot, which is a bit of a shame. If I've got time, I will try and thin this out a bit today. And down the end here, again, we're supposed to get a nice crop of bing onion once the turnips are finished. The turnips were a bit later than I was expecting and the spring onions have got quite smothered. Now I think we'll still get a crop out of this. They're not looking too bad. You can see they're down here, the spring onions. They're a little bit leggy, but I think they'll be fine. They should start growing quite nicely once the turnips have been harvested. And there's a few down here, which I can probably start harvesting even at quite a young age. Now, pest-wise in the polytunnel, we've been quite lucky this year. Normally it's quite bad in this polytunnel for slugs and snails, but the frogs have done a good job this year. We are starting to get a bit of damage now. You can see that's been nibbled, but luckily just, just the leaves and it's not been too bad. So we're still being able to get a good harvest. But another problem we seem to get a lot in this polytunnel, I've never come across this anywhere else in gardening, is the problem with the wood lice. The wood lice, they really love eating all the leaves on the plants. They sometimes eat the stem and kill the plants off as well. And they also like to eat the strawberries, which is why we need to harvest the strawberries quite early when they start to ripen. So I don't know what it is about the wood lice in here. Same in the greenhouse. They just seem to eat all the plants and cause an awful lot of damage. Normally I just think of wood lice as a eating dead and decaying plant matter. But I've come out at night time and I've found them eating the stems of the plants. And they've actually ring barked the whole stem of the plant and killed them off. So some, some years are worse than others. I'm not sure why they, they do it. I don't know if it's a lack of water and they need to get a water source from something so they eat the plants. But normally wood lice aren't known for eating living plants. And then at the end here I put a few supports here a mixture of, of string and uh, bamboo and willow canes and this is for the cobra beans this is a type of french bean which crops particularly well if you have it in a slightly warmer environment most climates it'll do absolutely fine outside but here in scotland it just needs a bit more bit more warmth and down there there's a bit more wood lice damage you can see that's the butternut squash plant there which is looking really quite healthy but a lot of the underneath of the leaves there have been nibbled and if i was to look underneath that leaf at night time 
I would probably find that there's loads of wood lice under there eating it. So I'll come out now and give you a tour of the vegetable garden. I'll just show you a little hardening off area I've got here. This area is a little bit more sheltered. The wind doesn't catch it too much because of the tree there and also the land eye hedge here. It's also sheltered from the midday sun by the shade of the tree. So I've just got this as a hardening off area for plants I'll be planting out soon. And you can see here we've got some nice leeks growing on, some sunflowers, but most of these sunflowers have had issues with the compost being too acidic. That's why these are so stunted. And it was the same with my tree spinach here. I was hoping to get a nice crop of tree spinach, but the compost mix I made was using our own soil and our own compost. And I think our own compost is far too acidic for it. So these have really become stunted. But luckily these have self-seeded everywhere in the vegetable plot. So we'll still get a really good crop of tree spinach. So as I say, we've had a few issues recently with uh, pests and disease problems, and I'll show you them in the garden. Now, weather-wise, we've had quite a few issues with weather. Not as bad as we have in previous years, but we do live in a particularly windy part of the world here in North Scotland, and we had 45 mile an hour winds the last few days. The winds have really been buffeting and damaging some of the plants. Now, the date today is 14th of May, and if any of you know eucalyptus well, you'll know they're evergreen plants and should be full of leaf. This is our eucalyptus. This winter was particularly bad. We had some of the worst storms in 10, 20, 30 years, and all the leaves have been stripped off by this. It's a combination of strong icy winds with temperatures near freezing, and also salt spray has completely browned off this here. And I'll also show you one of our protective hedges, which has kind of sacrificed half of itself to protect the garden. So we have got various hedges and plants to try and give a bit of a windbreak from the westerly winds, which tend to be the worst. You can see this Leylandi hedge here. It's looking nice and lush and green on this side. This is the sheltered side facing east, which doesn't get the prevailing winds. But now to give you a shot of the outside and show you how bad it has been with the salt spray. So this is the other side of the hedge. And as you can see, it's really been browned off by the winds. This is part of the reason I tend to leave the hedges less pruned in winter so that the outside can be burnt off by the winds and further back when I trim it, that stuff's still nice and green and protected. And this is really just an indication of how bad the winds can be here. Now, luckily the winds we had recently didn't cause all this browning off damage but this is just to give an example of why we need to keep things sheltered and you can see in this one again nice and green on the sheltered side the west facing aspect is dry and burnt and it should be the same with the north facing aspect as well that tends to get blasted by the sea salt so you can see there again north facing aspect really brown and horrible and the inside sheltered side looking lush and green so as I say the winds have been bad this year Luckily not as bad as some years. Last year we actually had all the green foliage stripped off all our trees around April time and that was really a big setback for us. This year hasn't been as bad but we have had a few bits of damage. Luckily I don't think there's been any casualties, it hasn't been that bad but you can see here this first lot of plants, these were actually planted out a few weeks ago. These are the kohlrabi. They've really suffered. You can see some of the, the leaves have, have snapped here. They've been rock, rocking in the wind. It's also been very dry. So the soil has been dried by the, the, the sun, but mainly by the wind. You can see here, it's a few centimeters down until we get to some damp soil. Uh, I did irrigate this heavily just three days ago, but a combination of wind and relatively warm weather of around 15 degrees Celsius has dried this out. So they are struggling a little bit. You can see the wind blasting them down now, even though it's not a windy day. So, they really have been set back a bit. The other problem is normally we're a bit more spot on with our timings. This year, I've been quite busy with doing other things. Um, so I haven't had time to get everything prepared properly. Also, my parents are away for two weeks and normally they're here at the busy time of year to do a lot of work in the garden. So we've been a bit lacking with our timings this year. So what we should have had is a big brassica cage here to protect the brassicas from pests and diseases. Now the problem is we've not had that set up yet. I didn't want to miss the season so I planted it anyway. And what's happened is the pigeons have been here. So a lot of the kohlrabi are looking okay but you can see other ones here where the leaves have been stripped down to the leaf veins. That's pigeon damage. So you can see that on there. Also some of these other ones. So this is what the leaves should look like. A nice healthy one. And then again a stripped back plant. So they've really been quite bad for eating the leaves and they love brassica leaves. So what I'm going to be doing is I've just planted a few more uh, brassicas back there, a mixture of cabbage and kale. I'll put some kind of temporary structure up for now or maybe some bird scare to scare off the birds. And the other thing is normally we have this nicely mulched to stop any moisture from getting leached out of the soil by the evaporation which would have helped with the drought problem at the moment. And we normally, the mulch also helps with cabbage root fly which is a a bad pest which lays its eggs at the base of the plant. Its maggots basically then hatch 
and eat the roots off the plant and the plant stops growing and eventually dies. And there's no sign of it yet but it probably is already laying a few eggs around the plants. So what I've done is I quickly put a few cabbage collars around these longer live plants. Kohlrabi is not such an issue because it crops so fast they don't normally get affected as much by pests. So I've got them protected but I really could do with getting the mulch on this. And then the other problem is the cabbage white butterfly will be here soon laying its eggs and its caterpillars will eat all of this so I really need to get going and try and get this built. But until my dad's back I don't have the uh, manpower basically to build the structure because it's a little bit difficult uh, building the big cabbage cage with just one person. So I'll give you an update on the other plants. Everything else is doing pretty well luckily. Now the onions are doing really well actually, much better than I was expecting so the wind didn't damage them too much. You can see there is a couple that have been damaged like this one here has kind of flopped over the winds rocked it and loosened the roots so a little bit of wind damage luckily most of the onions are doing okay the younger ones as well the garlic doesn't look too bad either and on this plot here where we're growing the Jerusalem artichokes they were quite small so they've not been damaged by the wind yet but what I will do is once they get to about a meter hill or three foot in height I will cut the top off encourage some branching and that will just make sure that they don't get as much wind damage. You can see I recently planted sunflowers though. They're really struggling. The wind is drying them out a lot. I don't hardly have the water to water every single one in the garden, so they're suffering a bit. I'm hoping though, because the ground deeper down is damp enough, once they get the roots down deeper, then they should be okay because they'll find the water that is actually down there deeper in the soil, as long as the wind doesn't keep drying them out like it is at the moment. And then the other plot we've got around here is the pea and bean plot. So we've had a few issues here as well. So we've had pigeons eating the peas. Normally the pigeons don't seem to eat the peas much, but this year you can see some of these ripped leaves, and that's from the pigeons again eating off the leaves so as I say we don't normally have pigeon problems with the peas but this year they've been a real pain same with even in here um, it looks like that might have been slugs or snails eating some of the Japanese mustard there so a few pest issues hopefully the pigeons will move on soon and stop eating the uh, the peas and the, and the brassicas once they find some other food sources but they have been a bit of an issue and then over this side we've got another pest and that's on the broad beans now I'm trying to figure out what it is. I think it must be some kind of broad bean weevil because it looks a lot like weevil damage. I've not actually seen any weevils on these plants but you can see a lot of them they have these nibbled off sections on the edges of the leaves. Now there's not any caterpillar that I know of in this area that eats the, the broad beans so I don't think it's caterpillar damage but I do know they do grow a lot of broad beans in the fields in and around my area in North Scotland so it could be uh, that there's a lot of pests around for broad beans because they're, so, they're grown commercially nearby. We've not really suffered from this in the past but this year it's particularly bad. Hopefully it doesn't get worse. The problem with um, vine weevils and various weevils is although the adults nibble the leaves the, the young normally decimate the roots so hopefully this crop's going to be okay but at the moment it's really not looking 100%. It's just starting to uh, get going but as I say all these nibbled leaves are not looking good and we've got other ones which are getting a little bit of rust which is a bit surprising because we really haven't had very humid weather or stagnant air that would normally encourage rust to form. Most of them aren't too bad but there's a few here which are getting quite bad with the rust so there's not much I can do against that. I mean I could spray everything with fungicide but we try and be orga as organic as possible. We don't normally use any pesticides or fungicides in this garden so I'll just let nature take its course. So this year has been a bit worse than normal. Luckily there hasn't been too much slug and snail damage because it's been a dry spring. You can see the, so the soil is baked a bit dry. It's actually cracking up in a few areas here. So I will get the irrigation on this soon. All my rain butts are empty already, um, just from watering the polytunneling greenhouse. So it would be nice if we had some rain. Luckily the, uh, the river levels are still quite high because we had a relatively damp winter and there's still a bit of snow melt at this time of year. So I'm just going to be using the irrigation to, to irrigate this vegetable plot for now. And if I don't, it will, will cause issues with places like this section here where I've got the parsnips starting to germinate. I did water this recently but it's bone dry again with this wind so I'll try and keep that irrigated to make sure that they germinate. Once they've germinated they won't need too much water because the roots grow down deep but until then they are a bit touch and go and it will be the same with the carrots when I sow them. So I'll give you a quick update of the greenhouse. Hopefully when I go in there it doesn't steam up too much. It tends to be a bit dry in the polytunnel but it probably will steam up a bit. So I, I might just stand towards the edge of the door if it steams up too much. But it's not looking too bad in here. I did water it this morning, but as you can see, it's starting to dry out again. So I'll, I need to give this another watering. 
I would like to mulch this at some point as well. But I did underplant this with coriander. So hopefully the coriander comes up. If it doesn't come up, then I'll just mulch this with uh, some kind of mulch if I can find some mulch for the garden. I'll probably use grass clippings because at the moment we don't really have much else for mulch in the ground. So we had loads of old seeds of coriander here that I harvested about three or four years ago. I don't know if it'll germinate, but I've kind of worked it into the ground. I've watered it whenever I can. Hopefully it does germinate. But it is looking a bit dry at the moment. You can see like the um, butternut squash down here are suffering. And we have had huge problems in this place in the past with the wood lice. So hopefully the wood lice aren't eating off the stems. Sometimes the first sign is that they do go a bit limp. But looking at the stems, the stems look okay. So I don't think this time it is wood lice damage. So hopefully we're going to be okay. But that's the uh, greenhouse anyway. The tomatoes are coming along. They don't look too bad considering it's quite early in the year. Sometimes they go a bit purple if it's a bit cold for them, but we've had a, a pretty mild weather recently, so they're looking quite nice. So a few final areas like to show you on the end of the tour here. This is the old brassica plot. You can see some of the old supporting timbers for the brassica frame. What we've got here is some kale that's going to flower. We'll just let this go to seed. It'll hopefully keep some of the pests away from the other plants, and this is good for pollinating insects. Same here with purple sprouting broccoli. And we have got some purple sprouting broccoli over here which we've been harvesting, which is, so it hasn't gone to seed. And we're getting a really nice crop of young florets from that, so that's doing quite nicely. Whilst we're over here, the raspberries are looking really nice. Now, as long as it doesn't get too much dry, this should be okay. You can see we've got loads of flowers coming. I am a little bit concerned if it does get much dry, I might have to irrigate them. Otherwise, we're gonna not have a very good harvest of raspberries as they really like damp soil. So we'll see how they do. At the moment, they're looking really nice bright green foliage, lots of flower buds coming, so it should get a really nice harvest in about a month's time. Coming over, we've got the rhubarb patch, which is looking really good right now. It's really greened up nicely. I did put high nitrogen feed on this just to encourage those large leaves. You can see now we've got some nice stems starting to form, so we can get a nice harvest of rhubarb. And the rhubarb does do really well for us. We just keep harvesting it most of the summer and uh, we can have multiple harvests from that. And on the topic of fruit, this is the the, uh, the orchard. You can see here the, the apple trees have been flowering really nicely, so I'm expecting a reasonable harvest of apples this year. And also the cherry tree at the back, that's flowered very nicely, and we have got what looks like decent uh, setting of the fruit, so it look, looks like we're gonna get a pretty good cherry harvest this year as well. So everything's looking good in the, in the fruit garden. It just depends on how the weather goes for the rest of the year. We have suffered from drought the last two or three years, which for Scotland is quite unusual. Hopefully this year the, the drought isn't too bad. So far it's a bit dry, but we're not in drought conditions, so everything's looking pretty good on this side of the garden. And then I'll leave you in this part of the garden. What I'm going to be doing is setting up a time-lapse camera. I'll be preparing the ground here for potatoes and planting it up. I'm just going to do a little bit of potatoes down here. But what I'll do, because the tree spinach that I planted hasn't done very well, I'm going to dig up all the self-seeded tree spinach. You can see there's absolutely loads of it here. It's just kind of self-seeded all over the place. I'm going to be transplanting this and I'm just going to be planting it down in the bottom corner over there. We're just going to have a nice strip of it. Last year we had loads of it, far too much to harvest and eat, so we'll just have a small amount this year at the end of the kind of root vegetable section over there. So with this time-lapse footage I'm getting the potato patch ready. So first of all I'm putting down some slow-release organic fertilizer in the form of bloodfish and bone, mixed in with some ash. The ash is just to make the soil a bit less acidic and the slow release fertilizer is to feed the potatoes throughout the year. So I've just scattered that on the surface. I've then mixed it in with a fork and then I'm just using a long handled mattock just to get the, the furrows correct and then once the furrows are deep enough I'm planting the potatoes in the bottom of the furrows. So in this next time lapse section I'm building up a temporary framework just to protect the brassicas from the worst of the pests. So this is just a temporary thing, I'm just using some willow canes, tying them over, and then whatever netting I can find lying around the garden I'm using that to protect it. As I say this is just a temporary fix until my parents come back from the holiday and we can build the proper metal framework with the proper netting on it for the brassicas. But you'll see that probably in the next video because that's to be completed by then.
So that's all for this update on the vegetable garden. I'll give you guys another update in about a week's time and that will be the June update. And you should see quite a bit of growth because at this time of year with the warmer weather coming, vegetables really start to come into their own.